Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Zwift Community Live Weekly Windup, where we talk about everything that's going on this week out on Zwift. Today's program, we're going to be chatting about, obviously, Zwift Academy has been a big thing, but we haven't talked about a lot of the specifics that are going on from week to week. All, well, we kind of been catching up with it a little bit, but racing starts next week. The workouts are uh, having questions as well as some things going on, as well as a little bit of feedback here and there and talking about how cool some of them are. Other people saying what's going on uh, with the differences. So we're going to chat a little bit about that. There's also a training camp going on with a pro team, actually. Canyon Iceberg has been spotted out on Zwift doing a team training camp leading in the Tour of Britain. We're going to chat a little bit about that as well. And then we also have an awesome guest with us from Zwift Academy Tri, uh, one of the Tri team that uh, is looking to qualify for Kona. This one already has. We have Bex Remington with us from the United Kingdom joining us out on the program today. But let's get right into the action. If you do have, though, any questions, any comments, you want to jump into the broadcast and some, not, we're not, you're not coming in here on video, but you can jump in the broadcast with any questions or comments. We're watching Mixer, we're watching Twitter, and we're also watching the Facebook uh, post. So if you are commenting over there, I know our, uh, Guests, as well as our co-hosts, as well as myself, are all keeping an eye on things. I think Greg's probably chatting it up in there, as he usually does. So let's get right into it from In the Pens, a Zwift Racing Podcast. We've got Greg Leal in the house. Greg, well, actually, Hello. you're not in the house. Where are you? I'm, I'm, out, I'm outside of the house. I'm just <laughs> outside of the house. This out is on the porch. For me to be. I'm, I'm used to being inside. You know, this is. Uh, I thought I'd come out and see what the world looked like. It's bluer than I imagined. Because all you do is race on Zwift, and that's why we have you here to talk about <laughs> racing out on Zwift. So, what's happening this week as far as racing out on Zwift, Greg? Oh boy! Well, we have the uh, the WBR uh, Super League event is in its second week of uh, of test races. That's on Tuesdays at like um, when the E zone used to be in CBR. So check that out. Um, they're trying to put something together to kind of replace the CBR races to kind of fill that gap. Uh, and you know, I, I like I like what B WBR does. They're you know they're big promoter of races on Zwift, and uh, I think they can probably put something together pretty good. So hopefully we'll get some participation in that. Uh, next week starts the Zwift Academy races. I think we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah, that's super in exciting. In the pens, we're, yeah, we're on a production uh, pause, you might say, right now. So we're, we're going to start doing the show as a live show, kind of like this. Um, still still uh, putting out the audio to a podcast. But we're going to do a live show like this to have some more listener interaction um, and uh, just make it a little more fun. So working on that right now and i expect to that we start doing that next week so let's chat a little about the racing with zwift academy and like what we might you know, expect to see with that you know it starts up next week that's kind of a big deal i think because i think that the racing is really going to say a lot the workouts say a lot but i think that the racing is one of those things that really really pushes you and you can see the head-to-heads a little bit more i would think what do you think about that greg yeah, um, the riders have uh, some options. So I had a look at what the schedule was like. Um, so these things start on the 22nd, and there's a bunch of actual race options. So you can race on, there are two circuit races available, and then one climbing race available. So the circuit race, the first one is on the 22nd. It's on the London Classic course. Then there's one on the Volcano counterclockwise crit course. And then there's a climbing race on the triple loops. But there's also options to do TT races, which I find kind of interesting because, um, you know, they're already getting a lot about the riders just baseline power from the workouts. So I don't quite see why there's the TT option in there. You know, we're not going to learn a lot about race tactics or like how people think about racing from the TT. And, and you could actually get both of your, so you have to do two races. You could get both of your races done just on TTs and never have to actually do a real uh, road, you know, swift road race. That is interesting, so actually, kind of interesting. that they have three different types, but you only have to do two races. Is that right? So, yeah, huh. you know, and I think you can do two. I think you can do two of the same. So I think you can do two crits or two TTs. I think there's only one climbing race available. Um, so you couldn't do two, two climbs. But, um, yeah, so I find that kind of interesting. Right on. Huh. 
Interesting. That'll be um, interesting to see what people pick. You know, I think some of the racing is going to be on the Innsbruck course, I believe. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how. Yeah, it's a. Sorry to interrupt. I think it's the. I think one of the TTs is on the Innsbruck ring. I'm not sure okay. there's any um, r- road race on on the Innsbruck course. Okay, gotcha. Right on. Well, if they do the Innsbruck course, I think that that's going to be one of those where you'll be looking at who's the climbers, the specialists there. Mm-hmm. You can maybe show off if you're yeah. a TT specialist. You can maybe show off if you're a crit specialist, if it's on the a circuit course. You know what I mean? Like that might be kind oh, of yeah. something that, that, that they're looking for. For those that at least that are going for the finalist positions. So, you know, right. I think that's kind of a, one of the aims there a little bit. So you were thinking about maybe a couple of tips and stuff though for, I mean, some people are going to be not forced, I guess, but if you want to complete your Zwift Academy, you have to race. So you were thinking maybe you got any tips or tricks or anything as as far as something somebody should do. Yeah, definitely. Um, I do think this is going to attract a lot of people who aren't doing a lot of Zwift racing um, that, you know, are kind of attracted by the Zwift Academy or people who usually do workouts on Zwift. So couple quick tips uh be prepared for the start for whatever reason um maybe maybe we'll talk about this on independence in more detail swift starts are like mountain bike or cycle cross starts it's like uh super high pace to begin with so you know get a good warm-up in before the ride starts and just be prepared for that what i recommend is a few seconds before the race actually starts you'll see the timer ticking down start to ramp up your power a little bit just to get that jump and get to the front of the group and just try to hang on. One of the hard things is, you know, in these starts, the groups are going to start to split up. You don't want to be stuck behind one of these gaps that open up because you're going to be wasting matches trying to find the right group. Another thing you don't want to do maybe is, is get in the wrong group to begin with. You know, you might go out too hard, end up in the A group, waste all your energy trying to hang with that A group when you maybe you're, a, you know, uh, your power is maybe more consistent with one of the groups that's further back on the road. You know, it might have been better to conserve a little energy and find the right group. And that's a balance that's, you know, it's hard to give any tips about 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 how to start the race and try to figure out where to be. But, you know, I think just having the mindset that it's going to be a hard start and you need to kind of look for the right riders to stick with is at least going to be a benefit on someone who goes in totally cold, no warm up and not expecting these these kind of things. Yeah, great. Those are great tips. Yeah, definitely super fast. Don't go over your head, but at the same time, if you can hang on to a group, the draft is extremely important. So uh, looking forward That's to right. hearing more about racing on uh, Independence for sure. Uh, but then workouts. Carissa, you had some things to bring to the table on this, and welcome uh, to the back to the program as always, uh, Carissa Min. You know, admin in the house, good to have you. So what's, uh, what's going on with the workouts? You know, you were, I heard a little chatter about difficulty and also no FTP tests. So <laughs> what's happening here? Yes. Um, no FTP ca- test kind of threw me off. So I had to uh, squeeze mine in yesterday and I finally did my first workout today. I skipped ahead to number three, the, uh, the under ones. Um, compared to years, it, it, it does seem... I remember not being sure if I could get through some of those workouts. And of course I've only done one, um, but I hear uh, from other people that they're a little bit surprised at the difficulty or lack of it, of some of these. Uh, what, what, what was your impression? You've, I think you've done more than I have at this point. So the first two were difficult. The first two were difficult. And then I did three and I was like, Oh, this seems more like, like an opener rather than like a full on. Mm-hmm. And then I looked and then I looked at four and I didn't do four yet, but I did see that also that one seemed a little bit more chill as well. But I saw that you were making some comments about it. Maybe it was about the absolute peak power you could do for a certain amount of times with like some free ride time in there. So it's a proving ground to do whatever that you can. It sounded like you were thinking. Yeah, it, it looks like that. It looks like four of the, the workouts, I guess it would be four, five, six, and seven. Um, have free ride blocks in there, which they haven't had in the past, except for the FTP test. And then some of the um, semifinals, I think they had a a ramp test variation, I think. But um, that's interesting. So I guess what they're doing is, is instead of focusing on, let's give you a good, you know, sprint workout or anaerobic workout to test your system, they're saying, 
you know, let's prime you to put out your best effort possible. And this is maybe what they're, they're testing people on. They could use it as a filter. They would have four data points to work from um, and they would be able to maybe conduct their talent search from there. Um, it does make it a little bit different in terms of if people are expecting that kind of training camp experience to go into it and go, what, what is this? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I think that the idea is just like, you know, they prep you up with some intervals and then they say, do your best, give it your best shot. Um, and for that, you need those long rest blocks and you need it to be relatively easy overall. Um, I yeah, do want to point that. out that um, erg mode, if you're using erg mode, it should turn off for these intervals. Um, if it doesn't, that may be some kind of glitch, um, but it seems as though it has been turning off, but people aren't always aware. I guess maybe there's not a cue in the workout, which if there's not, there probably should be, um, to <laughs> change your gears. Um, because it's up to you to go ahead and create that that so power. People are like that spinning business. out, kind of a thing. Right? They're like, "What's right. going on okay. with this?" I've seen a couple of comments like that. <laughs> they they didn't realize what what the and I guess if there's no prompt, all of a sudden you're not getting the resistance and you're going, "What's going on?" Um, so just be aware that that you will need to shift gears for the, those intervals. Gotcha, gotcha. I am getting some. Uh, so that's what, what's going on with the workouts right now. It sounds like right now, some people are saying a little less intimidating at the same time, you know, the, uh, the free ride moments, it looks like do have a description you need to pay attention to there for sure. For sure. So we also have a note here that Chris has been absolutely slacking on her Swift Academy workouts. <laughs> How far are you in? You said today yes. was the first one. That's only one, only one. Yes. Cause I wanted to do my, my FTP test first and I was out of town and yeah. Um, <laughs> so that'll be interesting. You got a lot of time. Been, you got a lot of time. Just uh, jump into some races next week. And, oh gosh. <laughs> the races too. I know that's, yeah, I'll have to think about that. Um, I am, so, I wanted to let people know there is a, um, we've added some more, at least on the women's side, some more group rides to meet some demand. I will be leading one on Mondays at uh, 6 p.m. my time, which is Eastern U.S., so that's 3 p.m. Pacific time, and it would be from uh, 1.5 to 2 watts per kilogram. I will stick to that. <laughs> if you do not stick to that, bye. I'm not going to see you again for the rest of the ride. So, <laughs> but I welcome everybody to join me. Um, I'll hope to uh, get some chatter going, and we'll, we'll have some fun if you're looking for that, that kind of a pace ride. That's the group rides are all about that. It really is. It's about a lot of fun and just having some chats. Mm -hmm. um, I did one today and uh, it was pretty cool just hanging out. And you start to get the same times with other people and you definitely start seeing like the same crowd, getting to know people in the community with it. So now this is an interesting thing. I'm going to bring you both in on this one. This training camp with Canyon Iceberg, like this is the, today that they had an event over at Zwift HQ. Uh, well, not HQ, excuse me, Zwift uh, London. As you can see some of the pictures here, this is from uh, the event uh, yesterday, and they also just did a workout today. Um, as a three-day training camp leading into the tour of Britain, Britain with uh, the, the Canyon Iceberg team, actually, which uh, this is something new. I haven't really seen a series of rides put together like this specifically with a team of pro riders getting together and you're able to ride with them and do what they're doing in their training camp. I think it's a pretty cool concept. I think so right? too. I or think, Chrissy? um, whoever. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of the group rides that have been done in the past with pros, um, have been just normal group rides. And in that situation, they're going really easy. They're trying to make sure they're not splitting apart the group. When you have a group workout like this and it's a training camp and it's the kinds of workouts that they would be doing and you get to do it along with them, you're experiencing the same level of effort, even though your power numbers may be completely different. And um, I think that that's, that's pretty cool to experience. Yeah, I think it's way cool. Craig, what are you thinking about this? I mean, something new for sure. Oh, I got no sound from Greg. Hey, Greg, you're uh -oh. talking. You got no sound. Oh man. There we go. Sorry about that. There I we go. Had no. all good. Did myself. 
<laughs> so uh, yeah, this is really cool. The, the, that Canyon Iceberg team um, has a little bit of a uh, relationship with Zwift from before this because uh, Ryan Christensen, who's like uh, one of the you know one of the top racers on Zwift, competed in CVR Live. Um, is that right? Well, anyway, competes in CVR. Um, you, you know, joined their pro team um, and has a lot of experience on Zwift. So you know, I'm wondering to what extent um, the Canyon Icebergs or Canyon's relationship with Zwift influenced them bringing in Ryan, or maybe Ryan is kind of um, influencing them getting more involved with Zwift. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not well, sure I think which, Ryan which way it goes. was but. also r pretty high up there in last year's Zwift Academy too, right? And so, mm. and then Ali ended up winning, being the champion, but I think the finalists are all getting looked at and have yeah. opportunity that can come about if they pursue after being a part of the, you know, the, the, those finalists. So I, th I think that, uh, I think he was either high up there. I'm not sure if he was a finalist or not, but I I'd have to look back here, but, and I believe he was also on the broadcast. You guys can go watch the broadcast over on Zwift's Facebook. We were also live with that on all the Zwift community live spaces besides Facebook actually. And they just did a broadcast of the event today uh, with the Canyon Iceberg team. So pretty cool concept. You can jump into a ride still tomorrow. Um, for that event, it is going from August 14th through the 16th. So there's still, um, an event tomorrow at 1 PM central daylight time, USA. That'll be 7 PM UK time. It is a training camp group ride and race. Uh, tomorrow it's going to be starting at 2.5 watts per kilogram for 45 minutes. And then a 15 minute race that you'll be able to do against the team for the rest of the ride. Definitely go and check that out tomorrow. So that is a part of the training camp uh, that's going on right now with uh, the Canyon Iceberg team. So next up though, let's, that we have going on here on the program, we're going to go ahead and bring in Bex Remington. She is a part of the Zwift Tri team. And uh, this is something I think a lot of people don't even know is going on. Well, at least in the cycling world, the, 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 the Tri people know that this is going on for sure. But like in like, there's like a lot of different Zwift Academies. You know, if you go to ZwiftAcademy.com or you go to Zwift.com slash forward slash Academy, you'll see there's three of them, the women's, the men's, as well as the Tri. And Bex, welcome to the program. You are part of the Zwift Academy Tri team. How's it going? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, thanks for having me along. It's been, yeah, unbelievable journey so far in the Academy. So, yeah, loving every minute of it. Yeah, we're really glad to have you here. And, you know, the... Uh, I wanted to ask you up front before we get into a couple of the, more of the uh, other questions here, but but what has been your experience with Zwift and, and maybe a little background before you got into the Zwift Academy try or was Zwift Academy try why you got on Zwift? You know, which one was it? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, last year uh, I was racing professionally on my bike and, uh, yeah, had a little bit of a, a crash and was injured. Just um, broke my wrist and broke my ankle. So, oh my um, goodness. yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a bad off. So, um, as soon as I could uh, start rehabbing again, um, started riding my bike. And yeah, when yeah, it's quite lonely sometimes being on your turbo on your own. And I was like, what can I do to you know kind of spruce things up a bit? And everyone was talking about Swift, and I was like, you know what, this could be a really good idea. So. Um, yeah, uh, end of last July, uh, once I was out of cast on my foot, um, started rehabbing, doing like the really easy rides with Zwift. And yeah, it was just so nice to be part of the community and riding with people. And um, yeah, I ended up on my turbo for 12 weeks because uh, yeah, my wrist was uh, in plaster for that long. But yeah, it certainly got me through some pretty bad times. And uh, yeah, great to be a part of it. So it started with an injury. And then, sorry, and so then from there, how did the um how how did how did the progression into Zwift Academy try then take place? Like when was it you know the announcement on it and then the interest in the perk and did you have any like I'm gonna do this and make it? Like did you think it was gonna happen? <laughs> I never thought I was gonna be selected. Um yeah, it was kind of I decided as part of my rehab that kind of cross training was going to be the way forward. So, um, yeah, I signed up for the Ironman in November. Um, and then I was looking on the Try 24 7 website, just kind of researching and just look for it. And 
I kind of saw it come up that they were looking for um, the next applicants for the Zwift Triathlon Academy team. And I thought, well, I've got nothing to lose by applying for it. So, um, yeah, I, I put my name down and, uh, yeah, a few months later, here I am. Yeah, and so the selection process um, was a little more, like, random? Or how was the selection process and how did that go about? Um, it's very different to what the uh, the cycling one was. Um, so I, I did actually put my name down for the uh, Canyon Shram one, but because I was uh, in plaster, it, it was never going to happen. So um, yeah, when the uh, triathlon one came along, I was like, right, let's give this one a go. So um, yeah, to begin with, it was just filling out basic details, what your aim was. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, for me, I always wanted to go to the world. So um, yeah, deep down, that was always going to be a goal of mine from day one. Um, and yeah, from there, they kind of uh, contact. Um, we submitted a, a small video piece uh, just to yeah, let them know about us and kind of what we were doing and our aims and aspirations. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I think you guys must have looked at our data possibly as well. So uh, I don't know that for definite, but yeah, I don't think it was based on my videoing that I got the, yeah, got the place for sure. So uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, to be fair, a pretty easy application uh, in terms of just filling out the forms. and forward you know it's uh yeah it's been fantastic now it looks like you did a, a, a training camp we have a couple of pictures here from when you headed on over to california and you were able to meet the whole team which is really cool and all of you are going for a spot in kona and it looks like you also uh made it from and how do you go about making it for kona like what happened with that story real quick yeah, so uh, I'm Ann Bolton, uh, yeah, beginning of July, and yeah, on you know, my wildest dreams, I actually qualified, so uh, female, and yeah, fourth overall, so it was a crazy day out, but yeah, probably made up about it. <laughs> That's absolutely awesome. So the whole goal of this program was with Academy Tri is to take all of the athletes to, um, to Kona. And so they all have to qualify through the program. And you're like a fully supported athlete, right? Like I'm looking at some of this stuff here and this was from your Instagram. A bunch of cliff bar was showing up at your house. Yeah, the support we've received has been, yeah, unbelievable. So, you know, I got our, uh, our cliff delivery uh, the other day. Frank kind of contacted me and said, you've got a delivery. And I was like, oh no, what's arrived now? And literally it was up to the ceiling in the kitchen. It's like unbelievable. So yeah completely fueled for the for the uh, rest of the season now definitely that's really cool really really cool and then also what's going on here is that it's specialized in the wind tunnel yeah so uh, we're really fortunate that we got to go to a specialized headquarters in Cali and yeah uh, we got given our uh, specialized shivs and yeah we were in the wind tunnel so yeah lots of top tips there and trying to go fast and optimize positions and yeah, that was an awesome day when we were in the wind tunnel. Like, really cool. Really cool. Yeah, it looks great. And they also <laughs> looks like uh, gave you guys a fit there as well. Unless that was at maybe a local bike shop or something, but uh, pretty cool to see here. Yeah, so uh, the retool system, um, that's quite popular. I think you can find that at quite a few places around the world now. And yeah, it's kind of, yeah, to fit. I've used it for a few years, even in the UK, and then to actually have it done at Specialized as well. Yeah, it's been really good. And yeah. A lot of confidence taken from it. I use that on all of my bikes, so definitely a good fit to have. Right on, right on. Well, I think uh, Chris had a couple of co uh, questions to bring in too. I'm going to bring you one more uh, before that. So, what's changed? I mean, you got all this support, obviously. You have, uh, you know, it seems like there's been a lot um, that's changed in your life. How, how has that been, that change? I mean, you can train more, I would think. You can completely focus. Like, what what's the advantages that you've gained in order to try and make it to Kona? Well, going to make Kona now. Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, I'm still working 40 hours a week and then coaching Ooh. on top. So I'm not a full-time athlete by any means. Um, but I think the great part, part about the academy is that, you know, we've got such a great, call. you know, we've got Tim Don, Lucy Charles. Uh, we've got great sponsors in Specialized. Uh, yeah. And, uh, Wahoo and Roka and yeah all these top of the range products and all the people that want to help and support us and you know I, yeah it's uh, it's a really good setup to be part of and I think Chris had a question uh, as well Chris you, you had a couple in there I believe 
Yes. Um, I was wondering what's coming up next now that you've qualified for Kona. Congratulations, by the way. Um, I was wondering <laughs> how what happens between now and then as far as the type of prep you need to do, what, what's all involved there? Yeah, sure. So uh, it's eight weeks now until uh, until the big day. Um, so I took a couple of weeks off just after the race just to recover. Uh, first Ironman, so I didn't know what it was going to take out of me. So, yeah, back into the swing of things now. And, um, yeah, I'm learning a lot about the event. Heat and humidity is going to play a massive factor in there. So, um, yeah, it's kind of optimizing my training, trying to account everything that's going to be happening out there. And um, I'll probably do one more event. Uh, just as a bit of a hit out, make sure I'm happy with everything before uh, before the race. But yeah, kind of, yeah, just trying to learn as much as possible at the moment because I am a newbie to it. So yeah, it's uh, a lot of learning. So with the professional coaching and mentoring with Tim Don, you know, Lucy Charles mentoring, what's that been like working with them and how much connection with them do you get? Oh, it's been fantastic. Tim was actually out in California training with us and you know, to call on that kind of support, it's, yeah, it's been unbelievable. So, uh, yeah, uh, I've dropped him a couple of emails just asking, like, a bit of advice. And, yeah, he's been on hand the whole time. So, yeah, really grateful for all of that. So, yeah, thanks, Tim. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's Ironman champion. Obviously, Lucy, Ironman champion as well. So, I mean, really cool to have all that support, I would think, on board. Um, I think we have a couple more things to cover here. So, what the, so and then also, like, what have you learned um, I think this was Chris's question. Sorry for stealing that from you there, Carissa. But what have you learned <laughs> from Zwift Academy Try so far uh, that can help the aspiring triathletes? Um, I would say you don't need to do it on your own. I'd say, yeah, really try and find people to work with. And, you know, everyone's willing to help. And that's one thing that I've learned is that I think that I've got such daft questions because I've never done it before. But, yeah, what you think is one has probably been through already so it's not such a silly question so don't be afraid to ask and you know if you want to get into the sport then I say yeah surround yourself with the people who have all started off as novices and yeah maybe they've gone on to the big time and they're professionals but yeah they all understand and that everyone's willing to help so I say yeah surround yourself with the people the people you know definitely awesome well done Chris I think you got a couple more go ahead I had one more. I was curious because you started out as a, a road cyclist and I know originally you were a little nervous about being in the pack again with your injury. Um, now that you've had this experience, I know it might be a little early because Kona isn't here yet, but do you know what the future might hold for you? Is is the world of, of triathlon going to be what you focus on? Or are you going to go back to road racing? Oh, tough question. Um... I don't know. I think maybe last year I'd have still said, yeah, I'm going to go back to race. Um, but having done the Ironman a few weeks ago, yeah, I, I, I might secretly enjoyed it. So uh, I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to admit to that in our house because uh, we're a bit of a road cycling house. So, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'll be having words after I've had this podcast. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm going to grab one now. That's cool. Great. <laughs> Greg, you got, uh, you got anything? I think you had one, uh, one or two in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I notice um, a lot of a lot of triathletes I know train indoors. I think like the um, the kind of like uptake of indoor training for triathletes seems uh, stronger than for road racers. Um, what do you think it is? What is it about like training indoors and Zwift that's conducive to to triathlon training? Um, for me, I'm finding because I'm trying to fit in so much more. Um, yeah, you know, it's a lot easier now to do like a high intensity and get the value of doing a, a turbo session on Zwift um, and then and being able to do a run and you can, yeah, kind of, there's more kind of time in order to do it, but to get out on the road realistically, do three hours and then on top, it's, it's just not possible, especially where we live, where it's dark and nights are starting to draw in, you've got the traffic. So it just makes it a much safer environment and you can get the quality that you actually need as well. So it's definitely worth it. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, the uh, scrunch for time thing is is what it's all about. There, there's also just consistent efforts, though. I would think, Greg, uh, too. You know, or Bex. I mean, 
as well, like the amount of consistency that you have to have, it's probably a lot different, I would think, X, than your training was on the road. As far as like what you're doing on the on the um on the bike. Or am I incorrect about that? Um yeah, I'd say that the efforts have changed very much um, from the road racing where it would kind of be like a lot of on-off efforts um, and kind of responding to attacks. So, yeah, it's very different kind of going to pacing for Ironman where, yeah, it's up, but, yeah, 112 miles and just trying to maintain. And, yeah, it was literally pretty much like a five, six-hour eating fest when I was on the bike for the Ironman. So very different to what it is when you're in a road race and, yeah, you're just struggling to get a drink or you need to get an emergency gel. So, yeah, it's a very different approach to the bike racing doing Ironman. Right on, right on. Well, Bex, are you, uh, oh, oh, go ahead, Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I was going to say, are, are you doing long sessions on, on Zwift? Are you doing three, four, five-hour sessions on Zwift to prepare for this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I must confess to doing three hours and yeah, when I was in a cast, I signed up for one of those 110 K rides and yeah, my boyfriend went oh, out yeah. on the road. He came back a few hours later and I'm still on the turbo and he just looked at me completely gone out going, what are you doing? I'm in a great time. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't really bother me. I, I really enjoy it. So yeah, I will sign up for probably four hours. So I am guilty of that. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I was going to ask whether, you know, just Zwift, just riding around on Zwift is enough entertainment to keep you motivated for those those long sessions or if there's some other way you keep yourself, um, you know, engaged while you're riding inside for those long hours. Yeah, I think with Zwift, like if you're standing up to like one of the like the 110K rides, um, yeah, the motivation you get from other people, that's pretty cool. Like people will kind of like egg you on or give you a little bit of nudge and encourage you. So that's really quite nice sometimes you can be yeah in a bit of a hurt box and uh, get some encouragement where yeah if you're just on your own and you've just got your headphones on yeah it's uh, a dark place sometimes but yeah riding on Zwift definitely gets you through it and yeah having other people with you the uh um so so where can people you know looking forward to Kona and everything and, and you're posting like crazy. I mean, you got like this, your Instagram is pretty awesome. Actually following along with everything that you're doing, you're doing lots of events. You got a lot coming up. Um, so, you know, what was I going there? I'm totally lost in my thoughts now to be totally honest with everybody. <laughs> so, um, but what's, uh, you know, where can people find you? That's what I was going on there. So they can find you, uh, on Instagram as well as, uh, Twitter, I think, but I think it looks like you're mainly posted on Instagram. They can follow along though. I think you have like a, a blog series or something that's going on. You were mentioning. That's what I wanted to get after there. Yeah, sure. So, um, each month, uh, we're submitting a video diary. So, uh, every week, um, each academy submits their, their story. So uh, mine will be coming out this Tuesday. And uh, yeah, it'll kind of tell my story of what happened in Bolton. And uh, yeah, so this Tuesday, you can find it on the Zwift Academy page. And it's also on the uh, Zwift YouTube uh, page as well. So yeah, you can watch all the series, everything that's been going on with uh, all of the academy athletes. Do you get a little icon in game? So people can like, Ooh. like if they see you out there riding or anything? Yeah, so we've uh, got the uh, Zwift Academy uh, kit now on there. So, uh, yeah, you can spot us. I was on there just before I popped into here. So, um, yeah, you have to excuse me if I'm looking a bit uh, yeah, sweaty <laughs> still. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we have got our own custom kit on there, so we can be found. Right on, right on. Well, thanks a lot for joining us, Bex. Everybody, make sure to check out those videos coming up. Look out for Bex Remington out on Zwift. Throw her a follow on those socials as well as on your Zwift the Companion app. Go ahead and uh, search her up right now. Give those right ons because she's on her way to Kona through the Zwift Academy Try uh, program. Bex, uh, thanks so much for joining in with us. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, all the best of luck to you and uh, uh, over at Kona. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. No problem. No problem at all. All right. Greg. What's happening with you next? Yep. I'm wondering when we're going to get our Kona course on Zwift. When do you think that's going? <laughs> that yeah. would be cool. That's a People great love the volcano question. as is. Man, that would attract a lot of triathletes, I think. Well, well, see, there's I mean, right this now we're like, talking thing about really long courses. You know, like, will they be used? That's a question, you know? 
So, I don't is is the Kona is the Kona um, tri course a loop or is it just one? I mean, is it one? Oh, big now thing? we got now. I think Bex took off. I don't know. Maybe she's here still. We can still ask her a question real quick. We're gonna keep on. We're gonna keep drilling here like a little bit. Um, no, I think it's. I think it's a uh, two loops, right? Okay, Bex, we'll bring it one more time. Two loops, Kona course. Um, it kind of goes up, out, and then all the way back up past. Um, so it's kind of like an out and back so yeah okay, a little back. bit of a loop on average I'm back. I'm back. all right got it got it got it got it so all right greg but we got to go back to greg what's coming up to back sorry for bringing back in there thanks a lot appreciate it greg keeps asking tri- triathlon questions all right so but what's up with you what's next are you racing are you what like what's the what's the deal with in the pens like what's happening yeah, I'm racing. I'll be racing probably the TT1 race. That's like my go-to these days. That thing is getting bigger and bigger. You got to jump in when it, whenever you're ready. Team time tra- Oh, yeah, the team time trial race. race. Oh, race. No, 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 no. The, uh, the team, team, team type one. Oh, team type one team race. Type one okay. Race. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It's going to be turning into the um, like the team. It's going to be like the team championship or something coming up in October. Same race, like Saturday morning. Uh, so I'll be doing that, uh, probably the P race right after this weekend and, uh, getting ready to launch this, uh, live show for in the fence, which I think is going to be totally awesome. Right on. Sweet. Very, very cool. Um, do you have questions coming through here about is New York coming? I can't, sorry. We'll just leave that one alone. Just, you know, there's things happening. We'll just say that. That's all we can yep. say. That's all we can say there. But Greg, uh, good luck on the racing this weekend. Thanks a lot for joining Thanks, in the Nathan. program as always, man. As always. So, and uh, Chris, I think we're going to go back to, no worries, Greg. Cheers. And uh, so, Chris, what's up with you next? What is up with me next? Um, I will be back with you as usual next week, I'm assuming. Um, yep. I'll be trying to catch Monday, up on. You've got huh? group ride. Yes. And I'll be trying to catch up with my workouts uh, while also hosting the group ride on Mondays. Um, hopefully joining in a few of these races. I might have to put those off until a bit later in the program. But I'll be focused on Zwift Academy for a while and still trying to get outside in the meantime. Um, I I don't know if I want to say this on and commit to it. There is a race outdoors um, not this weekend, but the following that I am considering entering. It would be my first mass start race. I do not know if I will actually, um, get up the guts to do it, but that may or may not happen. So stay tuned in a couple of weeks to find out uh, what's going on with you. With me, what is going on with me? So up next on Zwift Community Live and all the broadcasting, um, I believe tomorrow we have Gold Rush back, which is going to be pretty cool. For anybody who does want to jump into that, make sure to do so. I'm going to just keep on looking at Zwift Academy uh, workouts and trying to get as many as I possibly can. And then uh, looking toward next week, we'll be chatting about nationals, obviously, and seeing what's going on with the racing and maybe start seeing who's starting to look like some of the favorites in the Zwift Academy. So, all right, Krista, thanks a lot for joining in. And, uh, I think, and we'll see you on Monday for your workout. Yep. See you then. Yep. Bye bye. All right. And that's going to be it for us here on Zwift community live weekly wind up. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We, uh, we're keeping track of the questions, uh, throughout most of it here, but, uh, there was a few in there. Some of the it's good to see uh, it's good to see Sai in there. Lionel was in there as well. Greg was holding it down over at the Facebook posts as well. Claudia Barron, who I know is going after the Zwift Academy, good to see her in there chatting away as well. So and thanks to everybody tuning in uh, over on Mixer. Appreciate all you guys over there as well as uh, all the viewers over on Twitch and YouTube. Make sure to hit that follow button over there if you haven't done so already on Facebook. That like helps out as well. Head on over. Uh, to streaming platforms, though, Mixer, hit the follow button there. It will help get notifications directly sent to you anytime we do go live. And as always, everybody, right on.